It's a Z rack. It's called a Z rack because when it's fully extended, it's shaped like a Z. So right now, let's just get into how I did this. After I removed the bed, I had to cut out all of the cross members that were going to be in the way, and I added a new cross member on the back, which is a three by three square tube. The Chevy Love Frame has this seam here, and it's open at the back end. So I boxed that all in, and I welded the seam all the way up to the cab. The way I determined how big the rack was going to be is I measured from side to side and from the back to right where the frame starts to bend upward. That's my first stage. So every stage after that will be three and a half inches larger. After I got all the measurements I needed, I started drawing it up on my computer. The basic concept of the design came from the book, How to Build a Lowrider by Frank Hamilton. But as you can see, I deviated from that design quite a bit. Some of these things in the book are just simply not accurate. Quarter inch material is not a good idea. I used half inch, but some people use three eighths. So here are my dimensions. All of the front and back bars are the same length, 35 inches. So when I add the two side bars at two and a half inches each, that gives me a 40 inch wide rack. The first stage is 19 inches long. The second stage, 22 and a half inches and the third stage is at 26 inches. All of these center bars are five and a half inches shorter than their sidebars. So the first stage with 19 inch sidebars gets a 13 and a half inch center bar. The gussets on my first stage are nine inches and the other stages get 11 inch gussets. So once I got the design down, I needed materials. So I went to a place here in White City, Oregon called Rogue Metals. Out in their yard, they have various types of steel available, and they just happen to have exactly what I was looking for. So the material I used is half inch, and I used two and a half inch bar. For the front portion of all three stages, I went with half inch three by three angle, and the bar for the gussets is half inch by two. So at Rogue Metals, the material that's out in their yard is uh, priced by the pound. So at the time that I bought this material, it was 90 cents a pound. The rack wound up being uh, about 300 pounds minus the 20 pounds of hinges, uh, which wound up costing about $252 just for the material to build the rack. And if I was to have gone with brand new material, it would have been a lot more. After I got the material, I needed to cut it all to length and I used a horizontal bandsaw for nice clean cuts. Then I had to clean it up, had to get all that rust and scaling off of it. I cut these 45s in the front bars so that they clear the frame when it lays flat. Now before I started welding on it, I beveled every surface that was going to receive an, a weld. So anywhere that I was going to lay a weld, I beveled that edge a quarter inch on both sides of the material. That gave me the penetration I needed for my welds. So my welder isn't strong enough to weld half inch material. So what I did was just tacked it all in place real good and then I took it to my buddy's shop where he has a more powerful welder and welded it up there. One thing that I wish that I would have done before I welded it up was drill the mounting holes where the, the holes that where the bed mounts to. So since I didn't do that, I had to jerry rig my drill press up and prop the uh, rack on some tires and drill the holes that way. Some people just blow them out with a blowtorch, uh, but I wanted some nice clean holes, so I did it this way. When welding up the hinges, I made sure to follow this diagram, alternating my welds from one side to the other. I used inch and a quarter cold rolled steel hinges from GC Custom Hinges. One thing to note, that you want to give yourself some space between the hinge and the rack. I went with an 80,000 gap. Also, be sure to give yourself enough room between the Zert fittings so that you can get your grease gun in there. And if you're using this kind of uh, hinge with a ball bearing, don't forget to put that ball bearing in there before you weld the hinges on. I also got my riser tabs and my cylinder tabs from GC Custom Hinges as well. So speaking of the riser tabs, on the side to side motion, I placed the riser tabs behind the 3x3 angle 15 inches away from the end. Now you can see in the How to Build a Lowrider book, they recommend 14 inches from the center of the hinge. I went with 15 inches, but I believe you can go with 16 or maybe even a little more. I think it depends on what size of cylinder you're using. I'm using 8 inch cylinders and 15 inches worked out perfectly for me. 
Welding the cylinder tabs onto the cylinder can get a little tricky. First thing to note is you need to remove the ram out of the cylinder. This proved to be quite difficult, but you have to do this because if you weld with it in there, you will likely melt the rubber O-rings. My first go around, I actually ruined the cylinder because I welded the tab directly to the cylinder and I didn't allow enough time for cooling, which distorted the inside so much that I couldn't put the rod back in. So what I did instead of welding it directly to the cylinder was I welded it to a sleeve. Then I slid the sleeve over the cylinder and welded it on the bottom and that worked out really good for me. And I would recommend doing that every time just to eliminate the risk of warping your cylinder. So anytime that I'm welding on something that has threads or an area that needs to be protected or shielded from the splatter of, from welding, I cover it with this tinfoil tape to uh, keep all that junk out of there. So the mounting brackets for the cylinders that make the rack go side to side, I made those out of two and a half inch bar. They're 11 and a half inches long and I placed them four inches from the edge at a 75 degree angle. Now the first stage gets two cylinders and mounting those was a little difficult because of the leaf springs and the way that I wanted the cylinders to be placed. I've seen this done many different ways and I actually think I'm going to change this up a bit because I'm really close to the ground here. So I'm either going to change out the eight inch cylinders to six inch cylinders or relocate them completely. I haven't decided yet. But right now this works, I just need some more clearance. I think it's important to note that I'm using grade eight bolts for mounting the cylinders. Just using grade eight bolts all around is a good measure. So that's pretty much how I did the rack. Now, next steps are hydraulics and wiring and all that. Tell you the truth, I learned most of that from watching YouTube videos. My go-to YouTube channel was Russell Harris Lowrider Hydraulics channel. I got a lot of really useful and quality information from that channel. The system that I'm running is 24 volt. I'm using two group 31 950s, three pumps, and six solenoids. That's two solenoids per pump. I do need to tell you that Del Toro's custom hydraulic switch box really made wiring easy. But that switch box and some great customer service from Sergio led to a really easy solution. So I highly recommend getting a pre-wired switch box from Del Toro Custom Hydraulics. So I'm not gonna get into the details of plumbing and wiring because there's plenty of content here on YouTube to find on that. After all the wiring is, and was done, I filled up the pumps with uh, hydraulic fluid and gave it a shot. This is footage of the very first time I hit the switches. I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. It all worked like it was supposed to. So now I had to figure out how to get this bed on. First, I knew that I had to cut out all of these brackets and cross members. Then we set the bed on there, lined it up just right. I pre-drilled these bars to match the whole pattern on the final stage of the rack. Then I was able to use them as a template to locate those holes and drill through the bed. We did have to take the bed back off and put it back on a couple of times to cut a few more things and, and get it to fit just right. But eventually it all worked out and I was ready to hit the switches. So there you have it. That's how I built the Z-Rack. Um, I know that's a long video, but hopefully it helps somebody out down the line. Because um, I know when I started this process, there wasn't a lot of information available. So that's why I made this video. So hopefully it helps somebody out. Anyway, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. And until uh, next time.